Hey, today we are going to be making tuna casserole. I mean, some people grew up on it. I did not. And tuna casserole is, you know, one of America's favorites. And I found a recipe. I'm going to get this started here before I tell you that story um, while we let these saute. So I'm starting, of course, no condensed soup in this. We are making this from scratch. One tablespoon of butter going in. I have this very hot. And then I'm going to put in... Um, a package of sliced mushrooms. And then I'm going to put in um, about, I had two shallots, I'm about two shallots. It's about a little more than half a cup of shallot dice going in. Okay, now I'll tell you a story. So I had never had tuna casserole. You want me to see through the smoke? There you go. Um, and it was on the cover of a Cooking Light magazine one year. This is like 25 years ago, I think, at least. At least 20. And I never had it. And it looked so good. And I'm like, well, it must be good if it's on the cover of the magazine, right? So I uh, tried it for the first time. Oh my gosh, it is so delicious. Now I know why people love it. It's easy and quick and delicious. And this is my version, my recipe for this that is so good. So we're going to saute these onions and mushrooms down. And then we are going to move forward from there. But let's just get this cooking away here. Is tuna casserole one of your favorites? I think for people that grew up with it, you know, they either love it or hate, or hate it. But for someone like me, who never had it till I was an adult, I see why now it's a delicious family favorite because quick and easy and frankly pretty inexpensive given the current grocery si uh, situation. So and it'll feed a lot of people. You could also serve this for a dinner party and surprise your guests because I'm sure some people haven't had it since their childhood, but it is delicious. So tuna casserole yumminess. This is gonna be delicious. Get these mushrooms and onions sauteed up. Okay, there we go. I know, can you see me through the smoke? You can tell there's so much water in the mushrooms because it's all evaporating right in front of me. But we had a super fan give us this cooktop because he doesn't like it when I turn my back to the camera. So I'm not, here we are. But you have to see me through the smoke. So to that, I'm going to add, um, add our chicken stock. I'm just putting two cans of, chi of chicken stock in. Let that start to get heated up. And, uh, what? Okay. Get that stirring around. One thing about this induction cooktop is it gets hot very fast. Now look, the smoke, it's clearing. <laughs> So we've got the chicken stock in there. I'm adding a cup of half and half because I had it. You can use half and half cream, milk, um, but I happen to have half and half left from a party ye uh, yesterday. So I'm going to use that and let that get heated up here. And then I'm going to put in here um, my noodles. And I have about um, 10 ounces here of noodles that I'm going to put in. These happen to be glu uh, gluten free, but that's what I have. So I'm going to let this get a little warmer before I put my noodles in because we're going to cook them. They are not cooked. We're putting in dry uh, noodles. And they will cook in here, especially the gluten-free ones. They cook a little faster, and I don't want them to get too soggy. So I'm just going to put them in and cook them right in the pot with our yumminess here. So I will add our spices. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of, uh, one and a half teaspoons of paprika. There's a half. I'm going to put one in. You could have also put these in while it was sauteing too, but putting them in now. One teaspoon. I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of, maybe I'll start with a quarter of cayenne. A quarter teaspoon here. A heaping quarter teaspoon of cayenne for a little zip. And I'm going to put a little pepper and salt. We like pepper in this family, and we like it fresh ground, so I am going for it. Got a new grinder here, and I'm not sure. 
I love it. I like my old one better. But we're making it work. It's what we've got, right? Work with what you got. So there's some pepper. And then we'll put some salt. Not too much salt, because to me, I think the cheese is salty and the tuna is salty. But I'm going to put a pinch of salt in there and stir all this around. So now that paprika turned our milky mixture here slightly red. Smells good, though. OK, so now I'm going to dump in my noodles. Make sure I got everything in here. Yep, that's it. So the noodles are going in. Like I said, they're dry. But they will cook quick. So we're going to get those started. And while those get going, they will cook more in the oven because once we get this cooked a little more and let these noodles start to absorb the liquid, we will pour it into a casserole dish and we're going to bake it in the oven. So if the noodles aren't quite done, I don't want them to get quite all the way done in this step or they're just going to be mushy by the time we're done. So we're going to let those cook for a minute. We're doing good. We got some bubbles going on here. Oh, you can feel the liquid starting to get absorbed into our noodles. Okay. Oh my gosh, smells good already. Who needs condensed soup? We don't need condensed soup. We just make our own right here. And I can already feel these noodles starting to get softened up. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so delicious. Okay, we've got this to a rolling boil, boiling away. So I'm going to finish this off here and put it in the casserole dish. You can probably cook it a little longer if you want on the cooktop at home, but just for the sake of time here, we have got some of the liquid starting to absorb. And like I said, like we're going to cook it in the oven, so I don't need to get this all the way done right this second. So to this, I'm going to add one 12 ounce can of white tuna in water. I recommend you don't use the tuna in oil because it makes this just too greasy. But this is one can. Now you can use two small cans or this is one large can of solid white tuna in water. So that is going in. Break that up a little bit so nobody gets a big old chunk of tuna in their bite. Frankly, this casserole would be just as good without the tuna, frankly. Put a, throw a few more veggies in this sauce, and it would be just delicious like that, too. Breaking up my tuna a little bit. I don't have any big, big chunks. Okay. Okay, it's thickening up and thickening up. Let me try to see if I can show you what this looks like. You can see what a pretty color this is that we've got going on here. Slightly, slightly red and bubbling away. So I'm going to add here one and a half cups of frozen peas. You could add celery too, carrots too, whatever you like. Great thing about a casserole, right? You can put in what you have or put in what you like. If you had a bag of peas and carrots in the freezer, shoot, you could use that too, no problem. <laughs> it would work great. Okay, I've got that mixed in. Oh my gosh, it looks so yummy here. I'll show you with the peas. Gives us a little green going on there. And I'm gonna add the zest of a lemon because I like to brighten it up a little bit. Of course, I love lemon in most things, especially things that have fish. I'm going to add about a cup of freshly grated Parmesan. Of course, you know we grate our own cheese around here. We don't use the pre-shredded stuff because it um, just doesn't melt like the freshly grated stuff does. It doesn't give you as creamy as a, of a texture as grating it yourself. Okay, oh my gosh, this looks delicious already. Make sure I got everything in here, which I think I do. The zest, the zest smells so good as soon as the zest hit the heat there. 
and our peas, the tuna, the mushrooms, onions, boom. Tuna casserole, let me get my dish here. Got the spices, yep. Sometimes I get done and I'm like, uh oh, I had something left. Okay, casserole dish, I sprayed it with some cooking spray and I'm gonna pour our yumminess right in here. Oh my gosh, that looked great. I get it all out here, get all my peas out. Okay, there we go. Now I need to turn this thing off. There we go. Get this out of the way if I can. I'm gonna move this pot up there so it will be quiet. Okay, so now we have our casserole and I am gonna, now you could top this if you want, if you wanted to with breadcrumbs. You could take a few breadcrumbs, like a cup or two cups of breadcrumbs will cover this. Put them in a saute pan, saute them a little bit with some butter and get them a little um, brown and buttered. And then you'd put those on top. Now, if you're gonna cook it now, you could use crushed potato chips on top. Some people like that. I am not a lover of the crunchy top. And so I am not gonna do that. Today, I'm gonna put a little bit of cheddar cheese on top for my topping. And then we'll cook this in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes till it's all done and, bu and bubbly and it will be just delicious. Easy, family favorite, would be good for a dinner party too, and you could put in whatever you like. It's the beauty of a casserole. <laughs> now, if you wanted to make this ahead, another thing I love about di uh, dinner party recipes or something you're gonna take to someone, to a friend or a neighbor or someone who had a baby, you can get to this point and then cover it and put it in the fridge and cook it in the, mo in the morning the next day. And you could also freeze it like, like this too. Um, but I recommend if you freeze the casserole to put it in the fridge overnight and let it thaw before you cook it so it doesn't get some overdone parts with the pasta. Um, don't ask me how I know that. So um, it's perfect to go in the fridge like this and cook it later, or you can cook it right now, 350 degrees, 20 to 30 minutes till it's all bu uh, bubbly with a topping or without and enjoy. But simple, easy, homemade tuna casserole without any condensed soup. How yummy is that? So as always, thanks for watching. I love your comments. Let me know if you make it and if your family loves this recipe like mine does. Thanks for watching.